BBC Television presents... Hancock. Is that the post, Sid? Have you got my results? What results are we talking about, Hancock? Uh, your DNA paternity test? Uh, your half-term exam results from East Gene Primary? <laughs> Yes, very droll. No, the results of my visit to the genealogist. She's been researching the family tree, Sid, for several weeks now, and she said she'd put the results in the post. Do you mean this? I'll just have a quick look. Elizabeth Hancock, servant. Mm. Edward Aloysius Hancock, pawnbroker. Mm. Sylvester Hancock, no fixed abode. There must be the wrong results. This rum old lot can't be my ancestors. Where are all the men and women of breeding? We Hancocks were the pillars of British society, Sid. <laughs> oh, well, Hancock, it looks like you'll just have to settle with being like the rest of us. Welcome to the people. Serfs, yokels, peasants, one and all. <laughs> no, it's rubbish. I don't believe a word of it. That genealogist is a charlatan. That's it. She's got me mixed up with another Hancock. I know, it's the Hancocks of West Yule. They're a rough old bunch. No relation, of course. I'll rig her ass for me money back. <laughs> Hang on, there's another one. It's another letter from Miss Primrose Hill. She says it's very exciting news. It's part two of me family tree. Let's see. Emily Hancock, school teacher. Thelonious Hancock, vicar. Lettuce Hancock, lady in waiting. This is more like it, Sid. We're starting to nibble at the edges of high society here, nibbling at the nobles. <laughs> all right, I give in. Perhaps you are posh after all. You can pretend I'm your butler. Here, sir, is your newspaper and your toothbrush and your slippers. Wait a minute, Sid. There's even more. You're joking. William de Bastard Hancock, illegitimate child of Henry the Seventh. I'm a royal, Sid. That makes you a bastard. I knew it. <laughs> Turn over the page. There's even more. My great 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 grandfather was Richard the Third. Granddaddy was the King of England. Richard the Third. What are they going to say about that, Daddy East G Bombs? Nah, it must be a mistake. Send it back. It's an April Fool show or something. It can't be. It's January. And Richard the First. Richard the Lionheart. He was granddaddy's daddy. Give it here. You're having me on, Hancock. Stop messing about or I'll have to start curtsing to you. In a minute, you'll tell me you're related to King Canute. King Canute, eh? Wait a minute. Sid. Yes, King Canute. A cousin. 33 times removed. <laughs> well, you don't like paddling at the seaside, so I suppose that's where you got it from. <laughs> this is unbelievable. I'm related to all the famous people in English history. But for me, none of this green and pleasant land would exist. I'm gobsmacked, Sid. I knew it all these years. I knew I was someone important. Uh, oh, well, that was interesting. Uh, what we having for dinner? <laughs> dinner? Dinner? How can you think about eating at a time like this? Ten minutes ago, I was playing old Tony Hancock, drumming actor on the Hancock's Half Hour series. Now I'm King Tony Hancock the first. I've just opened a whole new chapter on my life, Sid. <laughs> I don't get it. Your dad was a window cleaner, wasn't he? How could he have been if he was a royal? Was he a royal window cleaner? Don't you mock, Sidney James. Your days of mocking are over, my good man. He was not a window cleaner. He ran the Royal Hotel in Bournemouth. His name was John. So that makes him King John II. Have a bit of civility. Yeah, I suppose so. And my dad could have been Robin Flaming Hood. <laughs> well, this changes everything. I'm not going to be the butt of everybody's jokes at the BBC anymore. Tell Kenneth Williams he's finished. I don't need buffoons around me now, Sid. I need courtiers, sycophants and supplicants. <laughs> so, you won't be needing me then? No, no, never say never. Every monarch at court needs a jester. I'll get you a cat with bells on and a pig's bladder. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to be treated like that, Hancock. No, it's all right, Sid. I was only kidding. You can be a surf, but you'll have to wear those curly shoes. <laughs> now is the winter of our discontent. Made glorious summer by this son of York. Grim-visaged war hath smoothed his wrinkled front. That bit's about you, Sid. 
wrinkled front, your wrinkly old boat race. <laughs> I think I'll leave His Majesty to decide on the future of the country. I'm going to work. A horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. That's you again, Sid, turf accountant. <laughs> I know, I'll contact the royal family and tell them I'm going to make a claim for the throne. It is I, Tony Ancott the first, who is the rightful King of England. <laughs> Would your majesty please pass the marmalade? Look, it's Robertson's golden shred by appointment to her majesty as it happens. It'll have to be his majesty's now I'm back. Yes, right to Robertson's. They've got to change it, Sid. <laughs> what do you want me to write to Robertson's for? I'm taking over, Sid. I'm asserting my rights to the throne of England. I'll expect there'll be a bloody war. But when I've won, you could be my privy chancellor. Privy chancellor? Well, I suppose it's better than court jester. What's a Privy Chancellor do? <laughs> well, it's the job of the Privy Chancellor to look after the Privy, the toilet, you know. Will you contact the Windsors and tell them we need to talk? Hong Kong is back. Over the sea to sky, carry the lad, born to be king. <laughs> What's Barbara Windsor got to do with it? You leave her out of this, Hong Kong. No, listen, Philip Windsor. You'd better get Charles along as well. They're originally German, sex Coburg or something. I think it's a beer. <laughs> they won't mind me taking over. I'm English after all. Give them a ring, will you, Sid? Okie dokie. What's the royal family's number? I don't happen to have it. <laughs> Good evening. Is there Mr. Hancock in? Could you tell him it's the keeper of the Queen Swans? Come to see him. A Sir Tarquin Snide and the Mistress of the Rubes, Miss Hortense Jacobite Revelion. There's no Mr. Hancock here, I'm afraid. However, if you've come to see King Tony Hancock I, he is in residence. I was expecting Prince William at the very least. Why have they sent you up? I don't want any swans. I've got a couple of broilers in the freezer, thanks very much. <laughs> Oh, I'm giving yourselves airs and graces, aren't you? You don't look very noble to me. Where's your crown? <laughs> I haven't got a crown yet. I thought you would bring me one. A spell will do, as long as it's got a big diamond in it. And you can chuck in a scepter and an orb if you like. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, King Tony the First. I've got a couple of tiaras. I could lend you one. Once you've established that you're the rightful heir to the throne. <laughs> Right, you can cast your orbs over my family tree, and when you've finished perusing, I shall expect a bit more forelock dugging. I'm not sure I want a keeper of the king's swans about the place, so you're going to be the chop for the starters. Hold on, I might need a few eggs. <laughs> oh, that's quite a family tree, Mr. Hancock, but not long since you came down from them by the look of it. <laughs> you're a descendant of Richard III. Pity he's dead, isn't it? <laughs> of course he's dead. He lived yonks ago. He's not likely to be knocking around in some old people's home in East Team, now is he? <laughs> well, that's that then. We were told you were Richard III. If you're not him, he must be an imposter. The Queen said if he's Richard III, he's got to have the throne back, but you ain't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some swans to look after. They need quilling, and I've got some down to pick. <laughs> Do you mind? I'm his direct descendant. I am not Richard III himself, of course. Look, I haven't got a hunchback from the start, but I've got his blood. <laughs> well, where is it, King Hancock? Can we have a look? Is it blue? Is it true? Are you blue-blooded? <laughs> of course it's not blue. What do you mean, where is it? It's in me veins, of course, coursing around my body like a greyhound after a rabbit. Here, I can feel it pumping. I can hear it saying something. <laughs> What's your blood saying? Avoid Bosworth Field. Oh, it's very muddy this time of year. <laughs> no, it is not. It says, Arise, King Tony. Avoid the swings and roundabouts of outrageous fortune. This time round. <laughs> yes, that's quite a coincidence, because King Richard III's body has just been found in a car park in Leicester, King Hancock. A flaming car park? That's no resting place for one of my ancestors. Granddaddy deserves better. Have you got an address? I'll go round and leave some flowers. <laughs> I have it on me. 
Here it is, Tesco Supermarket, 142 Market Road, Leicester, Leicestershire. <laughs> right, thank you very much. I'll get right down there as soon as I can. I'll do a bit of shopping too. Kill two birds with one stone. How convenient. <laughs> Alright, shall we get down the brass tacks, Mr Swan? I'm not a swan. No, Tarquin Snide. I'm not one of the keepers of the Queen Snides, neither. Well, Mr. Snide, my client King Hancock here wants Buckingham Palace, the Crown Jewels, Sandringham, the Gold Coach and all the money that will fit in the back of a lorry for a quick getaway. <laughs> and Robertson's Marmalade. I don't think that is possible, King Hancock, because a lot has happened since Richard III passed away, you know. I know, I know, but don't worry. You can thank the Queen personally from me for keeping the throne warm, but I'll be keeping it warm from now on. I've got a cast iron claim to the throne, and you usurpers can serve somewhere else. You can keep Scotland, it's too chilly. The Hancocks are warm blooded. I love England and parts of Wales. Cardiff. <laughs> well, I'll let Her Majesty know, but I think she'll want to hang on to the throne. This by all means, tell her she can keep the throne. We'll get a new one. Sid. I saw one on eBay. Click and collect. Do you seriously think that you're going to be the new King of England, Tony the First? Do you think that the British people would want a Tony on the throne? I'm deadly serious. It's all here in black and white. Who came first, Richard the Third or Queen Victoria? Answer me. No, I'm afraid your granddaddy lost the War of the Roses, Mr Hancock. He was the last monarch of the House of York. The White Rose. Now, if you were a Red Rose, it would be a different matter. What's roses got to do with it? I don't want to open a florist. <laughs> the last of the line of the Hancocks. I represent a thousand years of human inbreeding. And I have nothing to do with roses. There's not a rose in my family tree. I'm not flaming Monty Don, you know. You're not getting off that easy. <laughs> How about a bit of a compromise? Would you settle for a couple of swans instead? I can get you a breeding pair, you know. They can knock you out with their wings, so you've got to be a bit careful. Their beaks can open you up like a tin of beans. I can offer you some of Prince Philip's old robes, if you like. They'll have to be shortened and let out, because you're a bit more portly than he is. <laughs> old robes? Swans? What is this? I'm not running a jumbo sale. How dare you offer me anything so paltry? Sid, show them out. I need to speak to somebody of the same breeding and standing as myself. Send me Prince Charles or I'll have his head on a plate. Wait a minute. Your face seems to be familiar. You over there. Yes, I'm Sir James. You know, on the TV. The one who's always laughing. Ha, ha, ha. And chasing Barbara Windsor. I, I apologise for that. No offence to her family and all. It's all right, Mr. James. Barbara Windsor isn't one of our lot. James, yes, I've researched the James family tree, and I believe that you are related to James the Sixth of Scotland. Yes, very nice. Do you hear that, Sid? You can have Scotland. You look lovely in a kilt, but that's all very well. What's that got to do with me? <laughs> oh, if you're a direct descendant of King James of Scotland, then you are in fact the ancestor of our own royal family. What a carry-on. What in? How can he be? The only time he's regal is when one of his films is on at the regal cinema in East Team. <laughs> oh, sire, when would you like to be crowned King Sid? Any time next week will do. I'll put it in my diary. <laughs>